All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, so far, the agenda is pretty thin. Um, I did want to take a minute uh, to go back and revisit the topics from the end of last year, uh, just in case we need a refresher or update on any of those. So uh, the first one regarding other architecture support. Um, Alexander, I believe that was your item for the most part. Uh, any updates on this? Uh, any decisions? further follow-up questions of any sort? So I actually looked into doing that and um, I tried getting the OCI image basal uh, set up, uh, but I think it's not quite as mature as we need it to be. Um, okay. In particular, I couldn't get it to build actual ARM binaries. It would succeed, but it would have built uh, x86 binaries instead of the ARM binaries. Oops. Um, so, and uh, I also needed to update Basil to <clears throat> six point something, and we're on five point something, and that was a, a big project by itself. So, um, I abandoned that effort, and I, I haven't gotten around to uh, essentially taking the um, images that we get and then like repackaging them into a single image in a Quay where it shows up as different arches. So that's that's where we're at. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the, I guess the FSX snapshot leftovers bug. Um, I took a peek at the issue, so it seems that we were able to distill that down to a trident specific issue involving only uh, volume snapshots, so not relevant or not uh, requiring any kubevert specific stuff at all. I see the issue is there. It has not been picked up uh, by NetApp yet, so I guess that's the update on that one that I was able to see. Uh, anyone have anything else to share or context on that one? Okay. All right. So moving on to the agenda for this week, um, was there anybody that wanted to bring anything up? Uh, I don't see anything added other than the issue triage. Okay. So then we can jump to that. Okay, so documentation for manual deploy of CDI images. Okay. Okay, interesting. So it's a pretty straightforward request, I guess. Um, Anyone, I guess, anyone familiar with this process or anybody like willing to help out with this, provide so, some advice? So we, we actually sort of did something similar for, I believe it was Apple. They use Kubert internally somewhere and they deploy it manually. Um, we actually, in the, when we build the CSV generator for CDI, there's a flag you can pass it and that will generate all the YAML mm -hmm. for a manual deploy. Okay. Um, so we should document that, that people can use that to get all the YAML they need for a manual deploy. <clears throat> okay. Is it all right if I assign this one to you? Yes. Okay. Thanks. All right, so back to the issues. This was number 3011. How far back does that? Okay, so we have a few more going upwards here. Um, custom life cycle, life cycle hooks configured via CDI config would be next.
So um, this one we've already discussed, as I recall. Uh, let's see if we had any updates. Okay. <clears throat> so to me, this one's just kind of like withering a little bit. I don't think we want to pick this up. Doesn't make sense for, as we discussed, for like that singular uh, or that short term window before uh, they're going to have what they need in linker D. So I think probably no further action required at this time on, on this issue. Yeah, I don't Adam, think we want to do that. So, Adam, can we could we jump to the VDDK one? Please? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, this one, no new block status data at offset. Sure. Okay. I'm just trying to read it. Okay. Well, that copy of this data is in two gigabytes. That's very suspicious, isn't it? No new block status data at offset. I believe the same person actually also made a PR to fix this. Oh, so this is this is not MBDK. This is this is um, CDI running linking directly to VDDK. Is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. As far as I know, there are no like sort of two gigabyte. Sort of limits in VDDK itself. There's certainly none that we've ever seen, and we, we routinely copy much bigger files. So it, mu it may be that there's some kind of 32 bit assumption somewhere in the bindings that you're using. Um, I'm going to fast forward down here to the comments as it looks like. Okay, so it looks like we've got some. Good discussion here. Um, I guess we could check and see if there's an associated PR from this user. Uh, it might just be them. I, I I didn't like really look at it. I saw the discussion and I thought it was on a PR, so but it might not be on the PR yet. Okay. I guess it doesn't look like it. Okay. All right. Well, I think that discussion is progressing on its own pretty well. So nothing really to uh, further to evaluate there. Um, I'm going to pop back down just so I don't lose my place unless anyone else has one they want to jump into right away. But we have the, okay, so custom labels, I believe we looked at as well. That sounds familiar. Okay, we don't have any additional response from the reporter. Could we decide, I believe maybe uh, Alex Kalyanuk maybe disagreed with you on whether this actually works, Alexander. Was that resolved? If I remember right, he was maybe saying that this doesn't work. Okay, well, let's just wait for some more information on the use case on that one. Um, okay, S390, anything on that one? I, I think I'm, some of these are very familiar. I know we looked at them. Okay, so this has no responses yet. Uh, we did talk yeah, about the multi-arch stuff. He's, he's working on that. Um, yeah, I've been talking to him uh, on Slack about various things so they're they're progressing on this uh, okay at some point there will be a pr good okay all right cdi importer requires static credentials for s3 and gcs Sounds like a new feature request.
Okay. Okay, so they're kind of under, all right, I see you made a comment here. Uh, All right, any other summary info that you want to provide, Alexander, since you're already involved here? Um, looks like I guess it's on them to create a PR if they would want to. Yeah, that's sort of. Right. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's what I'm waiting on. And I just sort of gave him some uh, hints on what to do after you, you know, add some fields to the API. Yep. So. Oh, all right. Um, let's see. Uninstall requires additional steps. So this is another instance of I I delete the namespace and or um. And the operator is removed before the CR is cleaned up. And mm. yep. Is there so, anything we can do to make this like nicer for people somehow? Like I don't know. I, I had a thought on that. I think I, I don't know if this is nice or not, but we could put a finalizer on the operator mm -hmm. pod. You know the the operator pod itself. Yeah. That doesn't get removed until the CR is gone. And everything's cleaned up, mm -hmm. and at that point, it doesn't matter if the operator uh, is removed. Actually, that's the next step. So, but as long as the finalizer is on there, then the operator won't be removed, and it can do the cleanup. Um, I don't know if that's nice because the operator would be putting a finalizer on itself. So, yeah, more finalizers, more problems. <laughs> Usually. I'm just gonna put it that it was discussed. But that's the only the only thing I can think of, of of forcing us to keep the operator around until you know it cleans up the stuff. So but I'm not in love with the ID because it yeah. is putting a finalizer on itself and there's there's always issues with finalizers. Um... When deploying on uh, OpenShift, our operator is also managed by OLM, so that creates the deployment. So. Could screw up that interaction somehow. I wonder. So how are you supposed to, you're supposed to delete it by removing the, like what's the, the, the... You delete the custom. So like, if you look at the top, you install the operator manifest first, and then you install the custom resource manifests. And to uninstall it, you just do the reverse. You Okay. The custom resource manifest they need to leave. But yeah, yeah, if you go backwards, you're you're in trouble. Right, because the operator manifest includes the creation of the namespace. That's essentially the first line. So if you delete the operator manifest first, it will delete the namespace first. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. All right. Um Use PTR instead of pointer and update code that now, okay, enhancement. I think that's done actually. I think Alex made a PR to, to do that. 
Okay. So this is is basically for when uh you need a pointer to uh, one of the uh you know, basic types like an in sixty four or a string or whatever. Um, in, in, instead of making a local variable and putting a pointer to it, you could use the pointer library. And apparently, there's a new version of that called PTR instead of pointer. Okay. And I think the PTR library allows you to, it has some generics type stuff in there. So you have more types you can do it for. Nice. All right, document how to enable Podman sockets to run cluster up. It's great to see uh, this person active here. Did you also oh, you? So there's 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 a PR for this one. And um, the problem with that PR is, is that it's updating something in cluster up. There's mm -hmm. a in there. So I'm, I'm trying to get him to actually make the change in the Kubert CI repo. And then everybody that uses Kubert CI gets it instead of the CDI. So. OK. Um, would you care to add a comment there just to update uh, with the context then? Potentially, does that make sense? Link to the PR. Yeah, if you, if you, the PR is linked right here, is right above. The, it's uh, 3053 is the PR. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, okay. And in, in the PR, we're just got, I'm, I'm trying to get them to. Okay. So it's already been, you've already yeah. been tracking that. So, okay. Great. Thanks. All right. Um, next, we talked about VDDK already. So we need the upload pod to show its phase when we upload the VM's image. I thought we already had like a, well, it's like the in, I guess we have the in progress, right? As long as the pod's running and everything's ready to go <clears throat> in the data volume status. Right. So I'm not sure that if we already are showing that, if that's what the phase means, then what I don't know. What, yeah, oh, they, I'm they not want too like, sure. I guess they want I... con conditions or something. Yeah, it seems like they want to monitor like the upload, like the activity of the upload mm -hmm. somehow. Um, you know, the problem with that is, uh, you know, the upload pods have no kind of privileges to do any anything um, yeah. Kubernetes API related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not um, like a condition on the data volume. Like if you had like an error, or a failed upload or something, like when do you remove that? Like when they try another time, like I don't, it seems a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I think it, it, communicating that information could be difficult. What you would probably have to do is have like each pod have like another HTTP endpoint that has like some sort of status and then the controller or some other resource could get that and update the data volume. But mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So yeah, it, it, I, I think the issue is, you know, a user doesn't know like, oh, this is currently being uploaded and we've uploaded, you know, X number of bytes. You know, I can understand how that would be nice, but communicating that right. uh, would be complicated. Yeah, I mean, I think the we, logs we are. The, I was going to say we had the, exactly the same thing with Bert B2B. I mean, we have this sort of status that we can um, provide as to sort of how far through we are, but there was there was no way, to, there was no sort of generic way to sort of communicate that out from a running pod. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the way we did it in the end was just dumping it into the log file and then having something else parse the log file, but that was kind of horrible. Mm-hmm. 
I think so. I think my point here is that this is it seems just like a feature that Kubernetes is really missing and really could use. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, I guess maybe we can wait to see. This is a pretty young issue, so let's see if we get some like with a specific use case on info to report out. I think it might be. Uh, easier because I think yeah I mean I think we could do it with the uh, HTTP endpoint like you said Michael um, if it helped or we could guide uh, guide him to to and work I'm, on I'm pretty sure we actually do read the phase of the pod for the upload pod and mm -hmm. sort of in status so I'm, I'm not entirely sure what they're looking for well yeah. yeah but the phase is just it's running so it could be um you know, just waiting for someone to upload. I think, you know, that doesn't tell you anything about the status of the like upload itself. Like if someone's sending bytes or anything. Right, but we, we don't actually, you know, reliably know how many bytes we're expecting. So we, we can't like calculate a progress or something. We can say we've received this many bytes. That's about all we can say. Right, we could do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I believe we have a uh, uh, Prometheus endpoint where we could put some of that information. But... Not on upload pods, no. That would be like yeah, an HTTP endpoint. So there was one, I forget where this came up. I think it was about uh, live migration progress. Um, there was a discussion uh, you know, about this issue and uh, Roman Moore had suggested that using uh object status to reflect like we do it in cdi already with our progress um uh, updating the object status uh very frequently as the percentage changes is pretty expensive for etcd and might not be considered like a, a good pattern uh that you should yeah you should maybe use uh, metrics for that instead of object status so just kind of made me think of that as well well, our, our progress uh, is, is polling based. It, it doesn't like immediately reflect. We poll every few seconds. Mm -hmm. So you know that's why we're not overwhelming the API server with updates because we're just polling it every few seconds. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to the last one, which is we should replace CDI controller star with the CDI deployment. Uh, well, maybe, but it seems like a lot of risk and work just to kind of make it nice, I would say, but. Yeah, it's, it's like an, uh, this feels like an, an unfortunate uh, uh, artifact from the early days that would be kind of expensive to clean up. And just something you have to kind of get used to knowing about working with CDI. Um, so can the discussion's going naturally, so I'll leave that for now. Um, and then that brings us back to here. I see there's no additional items. So I'm going to do a last call for topics, even if you have just a little small thing uh, to share since you uh, came onto the call today. We'd love to hear from you. OK, sounds like nothing else to discuss today. So uh, I guess that's a wrap for this week. Uh, thanks for joining, everyone. And we'll catch you uh, in two weeks' time. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.